guidelines also apply to e-commerce marketplaces that means uh, if amazon now is using amazon pay to, to facilitate transactions amazon pay you know it will also attract the same papj guidelines so where e-commerce websites earlier like was there two models right so is it this e-commerce website which is using the services of a, a razor pay or a google pay to make that transaction happen sometimes they don't do that and they do it on their own they don't uh, involve a payment aggregator they're doing it on their own so even in that situation uh, they will attract the uh, uh, papg guidelines uh, so they will have to get that uh, you know like uh, they will have to get their their licenses in place now this there was earlier when these guidelines came in there was a confusion about whether these guidelines are applied are available are applicable to delivery versus payment transactions and uh, the idea is that it's not because there are intermediary guidelines that apply uh, to dvp transactions what does all of this nonsense mean delivery versus payment transactions or what we mean as dvp transactions are transactions where i where a customer pays but the goods are delivered in a deferred manner what do i say uh, i'm buying clothes online and i paid and the clothes will be delivered to me later. that's a dvp transaction in that situation uh papg guidelines will apply what is a non dvp transaction you are buying tickets online you are buying concert tickets you are buying movie tickets the the minute you pay you get the goods immediately that is uh, that is an exemption so in that situation the papg uh, guidelines will not apply does that make sense go into what broadly the papg guidelines uh, get into they talk about capital network requirements so if somebody wants to operate as a pa in india there is a lim- uh, limited or a minimum net worth that they have to uh, operate at if they fail below that number they have to wind up their business so it's just a threshold requirement uh governance of pas have to be managed professionally they should have the their the people who are managing the uh, pa should be fit and proper all of that you know very corporate governance sort of a requirement to ensure that the entity that is handling your money is 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 fit and proper and all of that uh they tend to have a comprehensive for uh, information policies they have to have uh, merchant policies customer uh, customer grievance policies privacy policies all of that they have to display uh next slide please yeah and the the when they have their internal policies the policies that they will display will be their own and not their or customers policies so their own grievance redressal policy their own privacy policy their own merchant policy so and so forth they have to display on their website or app or whatever that they have they have a kyc and merchant onboarding process so if if a payment aggregator is working with a merchant with a with a business they will have to do their onboarding process go through that kyc both mutual kyc because the merchant also has to do a payment aggregator kyc so they'll have to run their own checks and balances to ensure that everything is uh, safe and sound uh opgsp uh, okay i think we'll get into that in the next class and because now we're going to uh, opgsp settlement and all of that so i think we'll touch it in the next class uh any last questions otherwise please go through the slides and opgsp guidelines on a online payment gateway system if if there is a gateway that is facilitating or providing technology for cross border transactions or across border transactions then we have separate uh, requirements those are called opgsp opgsp is online payment gateway service provider so we know what a gateway is if they are providing uh, transactions for outside of india then they have separate compliances uh security and for fraud prevention so there are uh, guidelines that they have to maintain compliance with to ensure that there is no uh, security breach for example uh, there is this payment card industry data security standard it's called pci dss in simpler terms and i know there have been a lot of terms today uh, and we will go over them again and again uh that so anybody who's dealing or is dealing with card credit card related information has to you know abide by these industry standards so simple terms say for example you are uh, you have a, a cod or a cash on delivery uh, transaction 
uh, you order something from Amazon, they come and they say, and you want to pay by card. So if they allow you to pay by card on delivery, then they have to abide by PCI DSS. So anybody who's undertaking card related transaction has to abide by PCI DSS. Okay, so usme wo, like, generally it is like how your card machine is working and you know whether you, you've tested your card machine, how is it working, where is it stored, how the data is being processed, all of that. Whether your machine is of a particular standard, whether it has all those security chips enabled, everything. It's basically security related framework so that you can't use any random machine to process uh, paper instruments. Uh, prohibition on storage of card file data, basically uh, merchants cannot store your card data. Whether they are combined with PSS or PSCI or DSS, all of that, but they can't store your card information. So if you are uh, uh, buying things online from Amazon, Amazon cannot store your credit card details. They can't do it. They will only retain a limited information or tokenization, sorry, for transaction tracking purposes. And transaction tracking, thanks to Unbook, we understood is where, you know, is there a situation where you have to determine where did the money go? So most more more often than not, they store limited information, give give a transaction number so that they can track that transaction. That's it. Uh, more details on on this is that uh, direct your bank, or you give a mandate to your bank to allow a merchant to deduct your money. That's an e-mandate sort of a situation. Okay, recurring transactions are dealt with e-mandates, where uh, where your like I said your gaming purchases your uh, uh, cloud storage pur uh, purchases um, uh, and all of that, you, you direct your bank that this the day this merchant should be allowed to uh, uh, to, to collect, to, to you know, deduct your money. That's one. The second is tokenization. So tokenization deals with non-recurring transactions, okay, where banks or, or, or say uh, merchants store your card information and you know very often now everybody is is getting those notifications saying that do you want to store your card data securely that's happening so in that situation that payment aggregator and sometimes merchants also they need to have that special uh, you know uh, systems in place and store your card data for faster transaction but even in that situation the, you, you have to validate the transaction through through an OTP and and, and through a, so it's called a two-factor authentication system where you have to give uh, you have to authenticate that transaction twice. So sometimes you will do it by entering your CVV number and then an OTP. So that's a two-factor authentication system, and then that transaction can be processed. Tokenization as the concept gets into how the data is stored, which data is stored into tokens and we'll get into it in detail later because that may be slightly confusing. That how tokenization exactly works and why is it called tokenization? What does it mean? So we'll get into it later. So, so basically we understood that uh, there are two ways that this prohibition on storage of card data or, or financial data can have there are two exceptions. One would be for recurring transactions where you have an e-mandate and then one there is for non-recurring transactions where you have tokenization. Understood? Uh, Tanav, is that okay? Businesses then how payment aggregators ultimately settle the money. So they have to have an escrow account with their parent bank, and that's how the, they settle that money with the merchants and the customer. So that's just back-end management. Uh, next slide, please.